Hi, this is Roger, and today we are going to be doing a book review on Daring Greatly. Uh, this was a recommendation to me from Maverick Camp, uh, Yannick Silver, and I was absolutely blown away by this work, uh, by this book. What I've been working on personally over the last couple years is really making that transition from the hundred a week, hundred hour a week hustle, successful business, all the whole seeking money over money and glory over everything else, into learning about habits, understanding ego, learning how to find passion, and then most importantly to me is I get closer to the age of forty. Is how am I going to set my legacy? This book plays a big role in that, including some other books that I'll be doing reviews on here shortly. If you haven't read this book, let me tell you what you are going to learn when you do. One of the slides that I've put in my presentations for a long time is the word perfection flipped upside down. I've always talked about how perfection is an imaginary state of being that delays speed of implementation. It's my saying. What they say in this book goes kind of in line with that. Nothing will ever be perfect, but the context in which they deliver that message I think is better than one that I had heard before that was that in seeking perfection, what we're actually doing is squandering time. It's not just about um, speed of implementation or success, it's about time, which as you get older is your absolute most valuable asset. If you can learn how to not squander time and how to take advantage of every moment of life and become that enlightened, first off, you probably have a little bit more progress than I have, but if you're working on it, then we can follow this journey and this path together as you're gonna see with a lot of the book reviews that I'm gonna be doing here over the next couple months are definitely on that topic. So let's go over like five important lessons that I got out of this book, and then we'll give you an opportunity to go out and read it and make some comments or let us know what you think. The first one is, is define whose opinion matters. I thought that was a really good one because as I have in the past struggled with ego, and trying to fit into every social circle that exists, all you really do is burn yourself out and realize that most people are fucking idiots and you don't really care what they think anyways. It's a good idea to actually make a list. Write down the people's names whose opinion matters. And in most cases, it might only be one name. It might only be two names. In my case now, today, it's only one. The next thing is, is stop worrying about scarcity. I hear people talking about this all the time, that scarcity is the biggest, or the scarcity mindset is really the biggest killer of success. There's another book that I've done a review on in the past called The Poverty Mindset, or Overcoming the Poverty Mindset, that really thinks about this, is that I can sit here and tell you that we live in a world of abundance, that there's unlimited opportunity if you just go out and try. You'll call my bullshit because you internally don't believe that to be the case. This book really outlines from a story and a psychological perspective how the mind works when it comes to scarcity thoughts and how scarcity is, um, the scarcity mind thought, bleh, the sca more coffee, have a nice day. That worrying about scarcity can, also, can actually limit your success. I know the people that have read this book are gonna wonder why I'm not talking about that this is really about the courage to be vulnerable. When I do book reviews, I do them from my perspective. I read a lot of other book reviews out there on this book, and a lot of them do talk about that vulnerability and that um, fear-based mentality that they're trying to overcome. I'm doing this from my perspective, so if you have an entrepreneur or following a similar path that I am, then what I'm telling you should make sense. The next one is stop being scared. Stop being scared of what other people think. Stop being scared of failure. And really the way to overcome that is, is that it's not easy to tell someone to stop doing something. I find that it's almost nearly impossible to destroy a negative habit without replacing it with another habit, whether it be negative or good. So in my mind, what I do is I replace being scared with being grateful. Anytime a negative thought enters my mind, and this comes from the book, this isn't something that I just came up with out of the blue, um, I start to think about instead on that topic like the fear of loss of a loved one instead of having that fear and letting it overcome my thoughts is to be grateful for the time that I have with that person that thing that pet that whatever it is right now and being grateful for that. In fact every morning I have this that I've been wearing for about two or three years. This came from a mastermind with Kevin Nations and the family in Hawaii. This is my turtle, I call him my grateful turtle. So every morning when I put them on, I tell the world what I'm grateful for, and I never start the day on a negative note. If I start the day by saying thank you, I'm always gonna have a good day. Uh, number four 
in this book was stop judging and just be yourself. I don't know if this is um, looking over the fence, the grass is green or whatever you want to call this, but the more time you spend judging what everyone else is doing, the less time you can spend on just being happy and being yourself. Stop worrying about what the gurus are doing. Stop worrying about what your competitors are doing to the point where it's um, causing you to take, not take action or causing you to have inaction. Just be yourself, which is one of the hardest things to do. It's something that I've spent the last few years working on is trying to figure out in my late 30s who I actually am. This book talks a little bit, actually a lot, about finding your true self and then using that to guide you in your life. The last point was really interesting. Now, I will admit I don't have children, so there was a section on parenting, and I almost skipped it. But when I read it, it turned out to actually be the best section of the entire book because it doesn't just relate to how you deal with your children. It relates how you deal with your staff, your clients, with just about anyone in the world. And what it comes down to is be the person that you want others to be. You can call that leading by example. You can call that not shaming people into trying to do something that they're not willing to do. It's really that if you want your team, which is the, most, the way that I most refer to this, to do something, you don't get them to do that by telling them to do that. You get them to do that by doing it yourself, by leading, leading by example. You, this goes all the way back to the Bible and earlier, it's something that's been uh, mentioned and ingrained in our society, but it's something that we still don't really follow. And the section on parenting, which I'm not gonna talk about the parenting aspects because I don't think that I have the um, opportunity to do that just yet, but read the section on this and really pay attention to it because it really has some impactful stuff of how you interact with the world. When I summarized this book from my point of view, now I would give it five out of five stars, which in reality, every book review that I do gets five out of five stars because if I get about a third of the way through the book and I'm not learning anything, I stop reading it. There's a good hundred books sitting on the shelves over here that that has happened uh, with. Be authentic, be yourself, be compassionate, or at least considerate of where other people are in their lives and what their path is. Don't try to change their path as much as try to control your own. In the end, cultivate meaningful work. There are so many stories in this book um, about people who didn't follow their path and that in doing so, you can find more success. You're calling. Um, there's a couple other books that I'm reading on this that I'll review soon that really have that. What this book and one other book have taught me in the last few weeks is that if you don't really consider what you're doing and the legacy that it'll leave behind, you're probably gonna end up unfulfilled. I spent my 20s seeking wealth, fame, fortune, and I was actually really good at it. But all it did was inflate my ego, wear me out, and burn me out. When you start thinking about legacy and you start thinking about what your life is going to look like 10 years from now, or in the case of some of my mentors, what will a hundred year old, I think it's actually a 111 year old you, look back and be most grateful for? It's not going to be the 100 hour work weeks. It's not going to be that one deal that you did. It's going to be how you used your time and what came of the time that you used, who you used it with and how successful your life was. The book's called Daring Greatly. And really in summary, that I challenge everyone that's watching this video to dare greatly to be compassionate, to be authentic, and to really live your true self. It's not easy, but this book will help you on that process. So thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.